Welcome to the party roll. We are five guys, one table, playing d and I'm Dusty. I'm Corey. I'm Mark. I'm Steven. And I'm Matt. Yeah! Let's party roll. Hey, everybody. we got a special episode of the party roll for you today. I don't know where this is going to fall in our release schedule. What do you mean by special? It's special. Because it's the first. Oh, okay. Well. A zeroth. Zeroth. Yeah, zero. This is the, the party roll year zero episode. You haven't heard this. Where we tell our origin story. Yeah. We, as, oh, yeah. as I'm sure you know, if you're a listener, we kind of, we started in the midst of an adventure. It was, this whole thing was kind of a spur of the moment, really. We we were a couple of sessions into our D&D 5th edition campaign, and we said, hey, we actually weren't even going to continue it. We were just kind of trying out the rules and seeing if we liked them. And then we were going to go back to another campaign we had going uh, that our friend Corey was running. Ew. A awesome sandbox campaign in the Pathfinder. It was going to be uh, awesome. Rule set. It was going to be awesome. And it was pretty cool already. Someday I hope that he salvages some of the stuff he had from oh, there and, and still, we do it again. It's still cooking. I will. I would love that. Uh, you guys might... You guys don't know, obviously, because you haven't seen it, but Corey's a pretty awesome DM. Hey, As is our friend Steven next to me. Those guys have run some awesome campaigns. And even Matt... Ran a very fun little one one off session. That, that was a long time ago. He he doesn't have a lot of confidence, but I I had a lot of fun. He had some awesome ideas. But anyway, so yeah, we kind of uh, so Dusty's, about Dusty's uh, not here by the way. Dusty's not here, uh, which is kind of fitting because Dusty was actually not here for our first two sessions. That's true. He shouldn't so, remember any of this. So he can just listen to this and then he'll get the story the same way everybody else does. Hi Dusty, we Hi, love you. Hi Dusty. Dusty. Engineer Dusty. Um, Nobody, no. nobody even joined in. You just looked at me with yeah, scorn. I was like, I don't know what that That's means. stupid, Mark. He's uh, not a, we, Rory's our engineer. Yeah, we have an engineer, Rory. I, it fit. Rory no, it didn't He was fucking mad He right was now. assistant engineer Dusty no, because he was the one pushing the keys you, on the you keyboard. You call him DJ Dust. DJ Dust. Oh, hold on. I got this. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hopefully you, everybody has listened to whatever. I don't know when this is coming out. It's probably going to come out pretty soon. Right. There's another episode in a few weeks where... Uh, Hope you guys like that, because you're going to fucking hear a lot of it. You're going to have to like it to get yeah. through the episode. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're going to like it. <laughs> He's very forceful. <laughs> anyway, uh, we started about two sessions in, or three sessions, I think, is when we, we finally... We like, played four for sessions? a while. Yeah. yeah was, we started a while a bit... in, and we just kind of, we had the little idea. We were like, hey, we all make each other laugh constantly, and we're having a lot of fun playing D&D. Why, right. don't we, why don't we record ourselves? Yeah, we're funny, right? Not really. I mean, I think we're funny. I think we all sort of realized that we have something special here. Yeah. I'm funny. Yeah, Steven's yeah. definitely funny. <laughs> we felt like it was time to take our friendship to the next level. Yeah. We we saw Steven and was like, we got gold. We got to get so this. So that's when we got the going. microphones. Oh, well, I say we got the microphones out. Our friend Matt here invested a lot of money into the microphones. Matt. And then we got them out. Yeah. Uh, no, they, they, they've they been trying to get me to leave like every episode now, but I'm not going to. I'm going to keep showing up. Uh, Court uh, order only, a, motherfucker. This is an episode zero, and like I said, this is the superhero origins. Not that any of us are super in any way, but uh, I figured we might as well like put out a little bit about ourselves as well as a little bit about the campaign. We are all friends from, jeez, uh, we forever. We've all known each other for at least about fifteen years. Well, at least uh, there's a other than a, actually a uh, Matt and Rory are uh, the least amount of time we've known. Uh, I think we've known both you guys what about five years. I got God. to yeah. the town we're in right now in 2009. So, yeah. So, about no, six, six years. Five, five to six years. Five, six years. Yeah, because Stephen came a little bit afterwards. Uh, I, knew, I knew you for uh, six Stephen years met now. both of you guys through work. The rest of us knew each other in high school. Well, I guess, Stephen, you didn't really know Dusty that well in high school. I didn't know Dusty uh, that me well. Me and Corey knew Dusty in high school. Well, and we, we met Stephen in middle school. school. God, yeah, we did. Like, uh, seventh grade, I want to say? Yeah. That's what I met Corey, too. What? What? Seventh grade? No, man. Did we know each other before that? Uh, I didn't meet Corey till high school. No, we did know each other because of our mutual friend. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to say his name because I don't know if it's okay, but I'm not gonna say let's his call name. him Jack. Uh, he'd hate that. Yeah, let's call him that. Let's call him Dust okay. Chain. <laughs> Who? What? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. If it's uh, who I'm thinking about, then that was a reference to something else, but never mind. Think. I don't know. But uh, anyway, so yeah, we've all been friends for a long time, and we all crack each other up constantly, so we decided to record ourselves. Anyway, D and D, uh, we we played Pathfinder for a good year or so, and honestly, Pathfinder is a really awesome system. I I like it. It kind of it takes 
D and D three point five, and it buffs it up till it's just shining bright. And they did a lot of awesome stuff. But in all honesty, I don't know if it's the best starter. No game. It's definitely advanced, but I loved personally the creation of characters. I'm a character oh, yeah. creator. Corey's for sure. made so many characters, but it's fun because you can make. A character, and then it's got all these feats. Yeah, you can go super detailed, and you can do all these backstories with the feats that you choose. It's just—I well, mean, we might go back. I liked we might it. Do a Pathfinder campaign. Well, that's really someday, funny because once we're character creation is probably the thing I hated the most about <laughs> Pathfinder. Yeah, but um, that was also my very first. Yeah, it's really uh, cool. How people find things they like and dislike. Right? I make characters but, for fun, but uh, we all kind of we liked it, but we had a lot of issues. I mean, we had none of us. I mean, we were all brand new to pen and paper when we first started the Pathfinder. So we had some issues. We, you know, right. we were all, it took us all a very long time to learn rules. And even then we, we would learn, you know, months into a campaign that we were doing something wrong. Well, much like we're doing now with yeah. 5e. It's just but at least with 5e, we all just started and kind of everybody else is starting with us. So it's, it's, it's kind of nice, kind of a communal experience. So like. battle's not a skull it's a drag. A lot, lot less complicated. Pathfinder is very technical. Yeah. Behind him? Did you try to get past him? Did he get past you? If he did, you're oh, fucked. Well, if he didn't, fine, yeah. you're okay. <laughs> it's like I don't know. Like, well, just for instance, like I had a. We're kind of going back into the stories episode thing concept we were talking about now. Yeah. Yeah. I apologize, but Let's whatever. Do we're doing whatever. Whatever happens. Yeah. Fireside Let's, chat. Fireside chat. It's uh, yeah. a really good name for this. Let's get a fire going. Yeah. Dude, you got a fireplace back there. We've never yeah. used it. You need yeah, to use that before you move out of this apartment. Let's set my couch on fire. Yeah, just cut that couch. I mean, it's all. You know, <laughs> oh, I thought we were talking the about the couch. The cats are shredded at the couch anyway. Chop yeah. it up, toss it in the fire. Let's go. Cats? I don't have cats. Yeah. Albie. It's roommate. Albie fucking roommates. roommate. <laughs> wow, we can't air this now thanks to that fuck up. Other I than, know. You oh, blew it. Because there wasn't an episode where Matt went. My cat. I mean, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Cats out of the bag. Sort of like when I'm like, I'm from Michigan. Everybody's like, shut up, Mark. <laughs> The look of childlike wonder on Steven's face while he pushes that button. It's just a treasure. Hey, that cat's out of the bag. Dude. Anyway, uh, it. I was the cat. Yeah, now you that, got it. That, yeah, you now missed you that because you were talking. Yeah, you, you hang your head. I was trying to do the thing. You hang your uh, head. I had, a car- I had a paladin that I was playing. And uh, really, can you guys imagine me being the straight man? I mean, come on. But uh, can't even imagine it. I know, right? Uh you but don't even sound disapproving. About half, <laughs> about halfway through the campaign, I said, or like we had already played several campaigns with these characters actually, and uh, about halfway through like the last campaign we used them in, I was like, oh hey, the reason I suck in combat is because I built this character completely wrong, and he's useless. Mm. And so, uh, he, Stephen, who was the DM at the time, GM because it was Pathfinder, let me uh, kind of do a revamp. I don't. We kind of hand waved it. Story that, reason somehow. Was that during the Harvester thing? No, that was during... Uh, the Pastafaria. Pastafaria. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Land of pasta people. <laughs> oh, God. It's so sad that we weren't recording that. That was amazing. There's a lot of things that I wish we had recorded. Really? Yeah, go back in time with a microphone. God, even the... Uh, it's like, what would you do if you had if you could go back in time? It's like, would you like you know go punch Hitler's mom in the, in the ovary? <laughs> no, man, I'd record our Pathfinder sessions. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm still glad that we are where we are at the moment. Yeah, oh, yeah, totally. We, we've 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 come a long way. Yeah, I wouldn't say we grew up in it. But no, we are definitely we are, learning things. It is too late to grow up. We all that train passed us by. I failed that test so many times. <laughs> <laughs> like like it was presented there before me, and We're I was all just adults like, with yeah. jobs and things, kind of with childish dreams. Yeah, we just wives and fiancés and bills and. Roommates, constant soul crushing. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the whiskey comes in. Hey, whiskey. So anyway, uh, I guess let's let's save those for a different time. I guess let's try and make this episode zero, just because we decided that was kind of what it'd be. Sure. So this was episode zero, as I think I've said. We're we've been playing the Lost Mine of Fendelver, oh, the driver. the starter campaign for fifth edition. Uh, I think I said this in a previous episode, but I'll say it again. Why not? Because I don't know if that's aired yet. It's you could find it just about anywhere. It's very, it's very prevalent. It's uh, I've seen it in shop. I've seen it in, obviously in like comic shops. If you don't have comic shops, I've seen it in regular shops. Like uh, if you don't have comic shops, I feel bad. For yeah, you. but but I mean I've seen it like pretty much anywhere where that sells board games. Like you know, big department stores have it. You know, so it's really easy to find. And if not, they they sell things on the internet now. 
Mm, it's like yeah. Amazon or something. Yeah, something like Amazon. Uh, like, <laughs> like, yeah. Everybody's checking their phones. Oh, okay. This might have to be a short episode. Yeah. But, uh. You have to cut it quick. <laughs> anyway. So, we're playing Lost Mine of Fandelver. The, if you don't own that book, though, the way that this book opens is everybody has been hired by Gundren Rockseeker to escort a caravan of his to the town of Fandolin. You're coming from Neverwinter, which is a pretty popular town in D&D lore. It's been featured in lots of games. Right now, it's, uh, it was the main city of both Neverwinter Nights games. It was, it's currently the, really? I didn't know that. It's currently the main setting of, the, of an MMO, uh, literally just called Neverwinter. But yeah, I mean it's it's pretty well known town in Forgotten Realms, which is it goes pretty what we call the world far back in the other editions, right? Oh yeah, uh, well Forgotten Realms started in the third edition. Yeah, that's when they started doing that. But yeah, uh, so you leave Neverwinter and you're heading towards Fandolin, which is a town kind of to the south. And on the way, uh, the Gundren and his his posse, which is a uh, consist of one guy. Who That's named Sildar? Yeah, they they head out before you because they say they have to take care of some business in town. But you're gonna hold back, and you're kind of you're kind of walking supplies, you know, like a day or so behind them. Yeah, maybe like a day or half a day, probably behind them. And at some point, you come upon what looks like the scene of an ambush. There's dead horses full of arrows, mm-hmm. and you realize that they they have like tapestries on them that match the stuff you're carrying, and you know this is Gundren's. Like you know that they got kind of jacked by el- by goblins, and then which surprise, is sad to say, yeah, surprise, you guys get ambushed by goblins, and then, <laughs> uh, well, I I'm kind of going, I'm just reading the story now, but let's see what happened with our story now, because this is where we actually came in. We yeah. got our shit wrecked by some goblins. Yeah. No, you guys wrecked the shit up. Oh those goblins. wait, yeah, oh, no, this is the first encounter. Yeah, yeah. first encounter. You guys fucked those goblins yeah, up. We like did. you were all like, especially. Especially Steven, he was having so much fun with his, with his wizard because he'd never actually played a wizard. No, no, this. I have not. Uh, he'd played an alchemist, which was kind of similar. Like, he threw mm, bombs and stuff. Not really. I, not, I didn't have any magic. I just kind of had a ranged attack. Yeah. And a barbarian. He, play, he played the shit out of Barbarian and Pathfinder. Yeah. You play characters very well. He, he, Steven is <laughs> he's good at, he's good at games. Yeah, good game. I read the rules, yeah, and uh, <laughs> that's pretty much it. See, I have you read the rules to me, and so yeah. probably... <laughs> and me too, which is so sad, because I'm supposed to be damning, and I'm like, how, what happens? Hey, Steven, help. How, how am I... What, what <laughs> how am I dim? But yeah, they, they easily dispatched all the goblins that, uh, that tried to ambush them, and then kind of wondered how exactly Gundred and Sildar got taken, but, well... That's what the story says. Yeah. So they got taken. And uh, at that point, there's kind of an adventure hook. You're supposed to follow them back to the cave. But my seasoned adventurers, <laughs> I loved it so much. They are they are mercenary to a T. They're like, dude, well, we're we, pro. Dude, we were hired to, to take this to town. So we're going to take it to town. And I'm, I'm thinking like, your, your, your boss has been kidnapped. Who's going to pay you? But <laughs> no, we're taking like, this shit. No, we're doing a job. <laughs> so they take it to town. And I'm like, I don't, I don't think we knew who exactly our boss was. Right. I didn't, we didn't I, listen. Well, uh, again, like the first, like we were just screwing around when we first, when we were, were always oh, screwing yeah, around. We didn't, but, think like, we didn't think we were going to continue this campaign. Yeah. Thus our characters. Thus our character names. Like, But I feel like they've all deepened very well. They have. Wiz- Wizard got a full name. That is by far one of my favorite things. Is when he just suddenly belted out his full name. I'm like, beautiful. Seth Rogen has developed such a wonderful personality. Yeah, yeah. Or I say developed. He's dude. Just... I've stayed true. I've stayed true. true I didn't the, know. I didn't know Seth I was line. staying true to my character sheet until I looked. Dude, down. I was like, you oh, forgot about that part. That is what my character Don't would tell do. Tell him what to do. Also, at this time, Wiz was not a stoner college kid. He was a 1920s salesman. A 1920s salesman. <laughs> but I realized that his charisma was way too low to be a salesman. So <laughs> he I just had a really fancy voice. Whenever which, an opportunity came, I kind of switched him to something which, uh, more grating and annoying. Happened a little later. Okay, I guess we need to speed this. Yeah, we need to speed this up unless we want to do the rest of it without steven which i guess we could yeah we but could. yeah i mean i'm, I'm gonna have to step out part. but you yeah. guys can but uh, that guy so yeah uh eventually i got them back on rails and i'm like you know guys we i don't pretty sure you said don't you just want to go back there and no, save your boss uh, what i did was i think uh <laughs> the guy that you were actually delivering the stuff to was a business associate of gunder and he's like oh yeah that's can right you, uh, go get him because i'll pay you 
Yeah, like, I appreciate that. I kind of need my business partner. partner oh, and... God. I'm, it's all coming back. Yeah, yeah. I remember. It's like, all coming I'm, back. I'm getting pretty good at, you know, getting you guys back on the fucking rails. I'm like, no, go back, go back. See, now I'm remembering what happens yeah. later. So you guys head back uh, to, you You went, so you, you, you took the bait and you actually went to the goblin cave. Yeah. And I don't know, there, there wasn't, it was pretty easy. I felt like you guys just cleared this place out. Uh, Mainly thanks to a little spell called Burning Hands. Uh, yeah, yeah. There's a big goblin encounter that you uh, that you get in, and like they're holding Sildar hostage, and you know the bears, the right? leader no goblins. The leader goblins. of the goblins is back then, and he's like, you know, I'll do it. And I remember now because uh, uh-huh. Seth Rogen was yep. like, we shoot him with an arrow. I'm like, okay. And he's you shot him with an arrow like in hold, the arm, holding him. And I'm like, okay, you do like four damage, and then he drops Sildar, <laughs> and you're like, oh, I thought that was gonna go better. <laughs> I thought I was going to kill him. <laughs> Is this where Stacy was playing at the yeah. time, too? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah cause his wife played with us for recession. She was, yeah. Yeah, because she uh, was really upset because we killed a, uh, a wolf. She likes puppies. That was in the, the entrance, wasn't it? There were three wolves. Three wolves, yeah. yeah. And uh, she was like, don't you hurt that puppy. And she was like, <laughs> I'm going to go up to it, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help it. <laughs> it was like, that's going to kill you. <laughs> it's going to it. bite your face. It's going to bite you on the face. <laughs> She's like... Puppies would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's kind of funny. There's a in the book. There was a little like subplot where uh, that uh, the goblin that was holding Silver hostage is like the leader of the goblins, and you're supposed to like bargain with him. And he's like, well, "I want you to kill our boss, you know, and go kill him for me, and then I'll be the leader." And then, nope. But nope. Uh, he got burning hands with the rest of them, <laughs> and then there were no more goblins to worry about. Then uh. You, you guys managed to get One the got Sildar. away. One got away. One did get away. Who fell off that ledge that we... There was a ledge that we shot the guy with the arrow. There was a ledge. There was one goblin that fell down the trash chute and got away. The trash chute. It was a trash that, chute. That's what I... Uh, that comes up in a... I don't know. Again, I never know if these episodes have aired on. It was yet. recorded. It, it was recorded. No, that one was recorded. But uh, remember, uh, at one point in Cragmaw Castle, I mentioned that one of the goblins uh, recognizes you, and you're like, no, no, got away. I killed them all. No, that little fucker recognized you. That was the one that got away. <laughs> Did we kill him? You, he's, his head exploded. Okay, good. Yeah. From the shatter spell. Oh, yeah. As, well, that's a very common goblin death <laughs> yeah. recently. They're just such big little heads. Yeah, that you, just, just, you just want to pop them. Just, just like a... Wait, ah, oh, my lips are too dry. Oh, gross. Sorry. I don't mean to call you gross. No, but. I mean, that's pretty gross. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. <laughs> Get, getting in there for me. Those moist lips oh, yeah. of his. Uh, <laughs> then, let's see, other things. Uh, you you confronted the bugbear leader of the cavern eventually, uh, named Clarg. Clarg. Uh, and I don't think he even got a swing off. No, like, I'm pretty sure there was a pretty awesome you, you javelin toss. You guys just slaughtered him. him. Oh, and yeah. then that's when the first of many Point Blake javelin tosses happen, and just right into the back. Go ahead, Matt. Well, explain, explain it. Well, it's not... See, you say Point Blake, and that's just like me standing next to him, and I just throw a javelin well, into point, him. No, I have you like... You run, I have yeah. release from six inches <laughs> away. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah so I, walk us through it, Matt. Walk us through it. I pick up a javelin, I just run full tilt at the person, and then I just loose it. Right next to him, to where, and I usually crit for some reason. Yeah, that's like crazy. Not, no joke, I'm not getting any help. I'm just critting, and then just like yeah, like I'm not giving him an advantage or anything. He just somehow <laughs> gets it because the, the universe knows that it's a magical moment. Is this also where Grick slaughtered the little goblin that was supposed to be helping us? Did yeah. we had let him yeah, get away. It was. It was a little goblin, yeah. and he he promised not to hurt us, and we were gonna let him get away because it's the good. Like thing you guys do. had a bit of a disagreement about something. I think it's probably because. Uh, Somebody was mentioning out, oh, we should just kill him. And then he like freaked out and tried to run away. Yeah, because I was holding him because I caught him with my dexterity check. <laughs> and everyone was like, hey, we should probably let him go. And I was like, I don't really want to. We should kill him. And I was like, okay, we'll kill him. And then that's when Greg nope. ran around the corner from not being part of the entire conversation <laughs> and just slaughters this <laughs> just goblin out of nowhere because he's running away. He's like, got him. <laughs> and, just, and like one shots this goblin. And we're like, okay, let's, let's let him go away. Because me, I'm just like, we should kill him. Like, okay, fine, everybody. I'll let him go. We're supposed to be good ish characters, though. I Yeah, but it's a goblin. I feel like it's that's a, a common problem. But anyway, I was going to mention uh, that like you guys didn't have any problem like at all. 
And yeah. I've actually been reading online, like, a lot of people apparently have issues in, like, the Goblin Cave. I guess some of these encounters are keyed a little high. God, but goblins seem to mess like some people up. Well, I mean, if they roll well, I guess I understand. Like, yeah. that's the thing about 5th edition is even weak enemies can fuck you up if they roll well. Yeah. Which is pretty... I mean, I like that because it's kind of silly that, you know, even if... I don't care if you're, you know, a level 10 fighter, you know, full plate armor, you shouldn't be able to wade into, like, 20 enemies just because they're level 1. Like, right. you should still manage... You know, if they get a lucky hit, they get a lucky hit and they, you know, get up in your armor and they jab their little sword because if you add up 20 level ones that's like level 20 (laughs) (laughs) i know i talk about dark souls all the time but it's the same thing like you have to be on your you have to be on guard even in the undead and there's a there's actually uh there's all sorts of things about encounter building that i won't get into because this is not like a you know all right bye steven everyone say bye bye to steven bye Bye, steven yeah well he's off he's off mic but uh doesn't exist anymore but anyway, yeah, like the more enemies you add, the more difficult it is. Like obviously, but it goes up ex- exponentially. Like as you add more enemies, because that's that's more opportunities <laughs> for them to attack you. <laughs> Steven's goodbye. Yeah, to Steven's everyone. Goodbye to everybody. But, you know, so I mean, so even you know, really weak enemies like uh, challenge rating like one fourth or one eighth. If you add more, that's then that's more times that enemies getting to roll. That's more opportunities they could crit you. Yeah, I don't that's care sort of what you do. Like if you suck too and you're rolling really bad that day, their AC is what? Like even if they've got like ten AC, you can still fail yeah. over and over again. That's what I love about this game. Is like you really don't know. Some nights you'll roll hot. Some nights you just want to go home. <laughs> you're hot and then you're cold. And Seth Rogen just had some of those. Dude, nights. I've had some bad nights. <laughs> But, uh, anyway, yeah, so you got through that, and then, uh, there was a little bit of traipsing around town, not really, uh, we yeah, missed we... a lot of plot, again, that was probably partially my fault, I didn't, you know, I don't, I haven't really done a lot of, uh, this is my first full campaign I've DM'd, uh, but until now I've just kind of done little one-offs that I've tried to loosely tie together, so I'm not too good yet at kind of pointing people towards plot points and quests and things they should pick up, you know, so... We didn't pick up all the quests in town, and I'm and I'm not really sure what to you know. When you get to town, I'm just like, you're in town. Uh, what do you do now? Like, yeah, I want to go do some uh, shopping real quick. Uh, I want to find a quest. What do we want to do? Yeah, let's Can I, get see, it further? I don't. I don't even see like. I, I guess that's because I haven't really had an expansive world to had, go through. But you well, now? you did a uh, yeah. in your right. in your sandbox. You made an awesome town. Well, yeah, oh, God, well, for me. But I mean, like as right. as in like actually experiencing because it's like well what do i see around me like, that is oh, kind of an interesting like that's, that's and... something or a way that i guess we all need to grow or try to grow anyways role players is like you know what do you just what do you do when you're not killing shit yeah i think we need to get better at that but anyway uh there's a little bit of tra- traipsing around town uh anyway you guys found out about some people called the red brands red <gasps> brands which uh rung a bell with seth rogan because yeah. his character sheet actually specifies a background it's kind of cool and this little starter set, like every character has like sets a backstory that mm-hmm. kind of sets them up for for the story. And his was that he is an ex member of the Red Brands and uh, the leader, Glass Staff, tried to off him. Yeah, I'll I be have... dusty. Glass Staff. Glass Staff. Yeah, I've got some bad memories, some bad times, and I don't want my aunt to ever know the deeds I did. <laughs> is that on there? When I was with the Red Brands, you know it that's is. Actually that's actually that's on there. I, I that's totally, why I, I keep so saying, thought that was a Corey original. No, that's why I keep saying it's like my aunt must never know. <laughs> He's the role playing that character so I did well as a member of the Red Brands. That's my flaw. That's my flaw. He doesn't want to, I I've got a know. I got a bad secret. And I love my aunt. She's real sweet. Your, I your love your aunt too. Sweet kindly halfling aunt. <laughs> Lives in a little hole. She probably, uh, she probably makes like, like meat pies. Probably. Uh, what halflings make? Anyway, I think her last uh, name is Franco. She is so proud of what you and my what you've accomplished Franco. in your, in your life. What does she think you do? Well, I assume I just bring money to her, and she, she just ask. never asks right. where it comes from. Like, oh, my upstanding. She knows what's up. My upstanding little hobbit friend. So Sorry, you guys, uh, hobbit, you guys eventually halfling. ended up um, going to the red brand area after you fought some red brands because if i remember everybody walked around loudly asking about red brands <laughs> we trying to get their attention <laughs> yeah, I remember that. anybody know what red brands are and hey, then, red brands <laughs> and then like uh, you get to the outskirts of town and hey here we are so you guys had a little tussle with like four bandits and of course you 
kill them pretty easily. Heard some then, assholes were asking about where the red brands are. Well, here we are. Uh, I think there was also you guys also spent the night at a farmer lady's house. You played in the corn patch a little bit. Uh, oh, yeah. You you made fun of her child. Uh, I forget Chip. what his name was. Oh, what is his name? Oh, I gotta find I forgot his. about his, that. His, this was pretty good. Oh man, that kid had it coming. That <laughs> kid had it coming, <laughs> bitch kid. <laughs> oh man. Let's see. We're just mean people. Uh, it was it was Kellyne, the the farmer. What was her her slow child's name? <laughs> he was a little. He was a little off. He was an easy target. Hell, even Grick made fun of him. Yeah, Carp. His name was Carp. <laughs> oh yeah. Come on. Yeah. Uh, but he's the one who actually told you the secret entrance to the Red Brand hideout. They were living in an old mansion at the end of, at the up in the corner of town, and they were kind of sort of terrorizing the lot, basically running the town as a bunch of thugs. And bastards. the people downtown like, uh, were kind of looking on the down low for somebody to take care of these bandits to free the town from their grasp. And you guys took it upon yourselves because you really hate the Red Brands. And you also... That's true. Um, well, Seth hated Glass Staff. You kind of got tipped... I think you kind of got tipped off that... Yeah, you hated Glass Staff. You sort of got tipped off, I think, that they might have information... On where to find your employer, since you didn't find him in the cave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that is correct. Again, I like I said, I wasn't very good at this because I didn't think we were going to keep playing this adventure. So I'm just like, uh, next part. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. You, we definitely thought that we'd find some more information, if not only about the um, the employer, but also for class staff. Yeah. Because I got a bone to pick. Class staff. Yeah. It's class staff. So you went into the red bread. Uh, you went into the the back door, and uh, see, Dusty's not here. He would have so many things to uh, say about the back, back door. door. Waka waka, come on, you earned it. No, no, I I got this one. There we go. That's a low. That sounds like <laughs> mooing. <laughs> For all those who don't know, and it took me a second, but that's Tim Allen. <laughs> Inside of Airhorn, <laughs> quite, quite genius. Tim Allen, uh, famous for his stand-up comedy and cocaine Narc- trafficking narking. abilities <laughs> and narking on his associates. That's all he's done, right? Those two things. I don't yeah. remember anything else that he did. Uh, you know, nothing I can remember. He, did he was like a side jungle- character he- on Al Borland show, right? Yeah, the Al Borland show. He did some pretty good movies. Oh yeah, Jingle All the Way. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah, was that's a, a great he movie. He wasn't in Jingle All the Way. <laughs> John, he, oh, that was uh, they get you get them confused a lot, but that is Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> well, sh- sh- Santa Claus. I'm s- <laughs> yeah, he so was Santa sorry. Claus. Jungle, so jungle, yo. Jungle, jungle. jungle. Where I had was, that random. I was thinking Galaxy kids. Quest. If I was going to pick a good Tim oh, Allen movie, yeah, nice. that's a good Tim Allen okay. Movie. Had Alan Rickman in it. Okay, but Toy like Story. Grab Thaw's I mean, hammer. <laughs> you shall be avenged. Oh. Or you can go with the Shaggy Dogs, my personal favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Engineer Rory. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. I've actually never seen that movie. That's yeah. one of the uh, only Well, it's Tim because Allen you're movies. over 12. Yeah, yeah, treat yourself, buddy. <laughs> treat yourself. <laughs> if you're looking for just a cinematic gem. <laughs> this podcast is actually going to turn into the Shaggy Dogs Review <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> Are we going to try and like... Come along with us as we watch the Shaggy Dog. Are we going to... Like start stepping on Red Letter Media's toes. <laughs> I don't think they have anything to worry You're about. You're watching what? <laughs> <laughs> so you snuck into the hideout. Uh, there was a weird little creature under the bridge. What, the, what was this thing called? Oh yeah, that thing. It was small. The nothing. A uh, weird little thingy with one big eye and like uh kind of skittered around all weird like and spoke this. into your brain. Yeah. It was underneath the bridge. It was like a hobo. <laughs> a little hobo creature. I don't even remember. It was like it was weird cuz uh like underneath this building, it wasn't like a regular basement. It was like a almost like a small cavern where there was like a big crevice in the middle and there was a bridge over. It was weird. But this little thing lived underneath and you managed to Did I just drink too much that night? I don't know. You managed to you gave it food. I think uh, you convinced it to do. Yeah, to you, help I think us. you're the one who gave it food. Wow, I must have blacked out. <laughs> and it, it told you where Glassstaff was. Oh, uh, was this this was this before or after you guys went and killed a bunch of bugbears? It doesn't. And our long-standing racism against the bugbear. Goddamn bugbears! Started. What do they contribute? 
That's all I gotta say. <laughs> just, just thugs and thieves, all of them. <laughs> Every time the bugbears move in, property value just starts going right down. <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> Poor uh, goblins. God, <laughs> sorry. Oh yeah. goodness. Uh, so you guys killed some bugbears, and you found ra- tied up in a room. A techno Viking. Uh, that right, was yeah. yeah. That was where we brought in Dusty. Uh, he he couldn't be here the first or first three sessions. I don't know, but he wasn't here for the first couple sessions. Phew. Yeah, I remember this now. So I had to figure out a way to put him in here. Uh, there was actually a room in this the Red Brand building that was supposed to be like a a jail area, like where you're gonna find some villagers and set them free. Mm-hmm. You guys never went there. So, <laughs> and so I decided, and he was they already died, and he was already here. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, I don't want to make you, I don't want to like try and, you know, kind of try and push you guys in that direction and then, you know, just make Dusty sit here the entire time. So I'm just like, uh, you find him. He's right here. You know, he's you got to improvise as DM sometimes. So you guys found him in the this rape room. Poor, as you said. A rave room. <laughs> that as sounds a little better. Yeah, yeah, sure. No, rape room. Cut that is. out. No, DM. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> DM just, rules. Just cut out the last five minutes. Uh, yeah, you guys found him and yeah, he popped out and he helped you and again you know his character was very much just a joke because even at that point there was like three sessions in we didn't think we were gonna keep going yeah i don't think he even thought he was gonna keep doing yeah. this either so his character was much more of a joke than even dust like does as you obviously know is a very light-hearted guy likes to joke around a lot but even even he's getting a little tired of the shtick of the techno viking because there's not much you can do with him he just dances well, a lot. Yeah. and the whole reason was he uh, like very well like the previous week i or at some point like when we were all over at a house we like watch stupid youtube videos together that's what we do and we watched the classic the techno viking the the hardcore dancing man that on the street angrily points at somebody who did something that displeased him and gets water and then handed he, to him and then he just Stone face did his dance down the street and yeah. got water. Yeah, I mean he's he's amazing. It's but, uh, amazing. Yeah, look him up if you haven't seen it. Cause... But that is what Dusty's character is based off of. Yeah, you were and missing that's, out. That's what his goofy character was supposed to be. And then he realized, oh, we're gonna play this for the next half a year. <laughs> good thing I made a good, good character. Thing I made a character with lots of depth and <laughs> room to grow <laughs> with no backstory. <laughs> but yeah, so that's why Dusty does a lot of dance blank because that's all he really can do with that character. But there's a charm to it. There's some charm to there's it. I mean, and again, it's not like he brought that character into a super serious game with, you know, uh, my name is, you know, Sildar Hallwinter to name an NPC with a really super serial D&D name. And mind yeah. you, we're just the group of friends who do this for fun. We are not like a group of random strangers who are like, well, I didn't really want to play some D&D. Yeah. Let's find other people who want to play some D&D. That's not how we got together at all. We, we already well, we already said how we got together. But yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's where we're coming from. You know, we're just a bunch of jackasses that, you know, started doing this for fun and then decided we were funny enough to record. We thought. We thought. We're enthusiasts. We were mistaken. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks this, for listening. This is the least funny episode. We're missing the two funniest people. And so, listener, you are mistaken as yeah, well. It's all right. Shut this off. Unsubscribe. Stop listening. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But listen in next time. <laughs> okay, uh, but anyway. So, yeah. So you killed some bugbears, and then at some point you ran into the Nothic. And, oh, yeah, you went killed bugbears, and you listened to the next room, and you heard people in there. Yeah. So you chickened out, and you came back, and that's when you encountered the Nothic, and he told you where Glassstaff was. See, I'm remembering, too. Good job. Uh, Good job. So you... He told you where Glassstaff was, so you went to where Glassstaff was, and... Obviously. You open up into his laboratory. Oh yeah! And you found you saw an adorable little rat I scurrying was around, and I was doing good. You were stealthing good, but and go so on. you decided you were going to grab that rat. Little be known to you, that was his familiar. And there was actually this was a, it was actually in the book, but I didn't make this up. But uh, it actually said if the rat spots anybody, it uses its little psychic familiar link to tell Glassstaff, and then Glassstaff books it. So by grabbing the by rat... By grabbing it, you let it know you were there. I set off the alarm, yeah. and he if you booked had, it. If you had just killed the rat, he would have never been notified. But who who would think that? Like, oh, there's a rat. I'm going to kill it Right, well, that, it's just like the whole uh, the thing with the, the caravan, where you know they expect the adventurers to go, well, let's go hunt these goblins down. Like It's kind of interesting. This is sort of made for... 
people who have never played a pen and paper game before, almost yeah. people that will, I guess, you know, sort of act like it's a video game. Almost, yeah, that's what I'd say. Is yeah, you know, people are like, oh, well, we have to go hunt these goblins now. You well, know, what messed up person where's, where's, would be like, hey, there's a rat in this room. We should kill it. I'm gonna kill that, that rat. Is, that is an odd little thing. Isn't like, that weird? Yeah. It's scabbers. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know really how they expect you to. Well, you there. He also had a hidden back door. Remember to his bedroom. I don't think you were ever supposed he to did. fight him. I think that's the thing. I I got this feeling that like no one. I don't know. I've yeah. been trying to listen to uh, other people's five E campaigns. Uh, Everyone kills the rat and it's just like no. Uh, I haven't. I haven't really gotten there on any of them yet. Uh, the only one. The only one I've listened to extensively uh, is uh, the awesome guys over the Adventure Zone. Hey, Adventure Zone. Yeah, uh, but uh. They, you guys they, are cool, by the way. They skipped to the Much entire enough. Red Brand hideout uh, <laughs> and just went straight to uh, Wave Echo Cave right after the original cave. Uh, their DM didn't want to really stay on script, so he wanted to do his own thing. So they respect. just kind of got that out of the way, and then they moved on. So, I res- respect uh, that. Which is cool, but I was also slightly disappointed because I'm like, oh, I wanted to see how they did all these things, and then I didn't because they didn't. <laughs> yeah. So I'm still looking for – I'm still trying to find like other people's – recordings and such just because it's cool it's it's fun to see how other people handled the yeah. same content so if you're out there throw us your, yeah, uh, your tag let's I know, know a few other fifth edition podcasts and i'm trying to find them and listen to them let's but, connect uh, as to this point i've not found one that you know got that far in it i feel like a lot of like i've even looked online for threads and then like i was saying a lot of the threads i find like they're all about the goblin cave and i'm like and like Clark, like that's a big name. Everybody talks about Clark, and I'm like, dude, we killed Clark in one turn. And we moved on. Like, <laughs> why is it so big? <laughs> Clark was in the past. I forgot about him. Like he was just there, and then he was gone. Like we just killed King Dave Grohl. Like you know, uh, but <laughs> King Dave Grohl. <laughs> oh, sorry, I forgot how when this is gonna air. But whatever. Spoilers. Uh, uh, shit. Uh... Oh man, <laughs> I might cut that out. We'll see. Well, we'll see. You know that they kill something. <laughs> but uh yeah uh what else happened after that you guys well uh, so glass stuff fled mm-hmm. you got into his room and you kind of lo- you looted the place dry mm-hmm. and then you just kind of left well we saw that he fled so we went ourselves yeah, we found yeah. the secret direction. room yeah you you chased after him so you guys you guys left that place really unexplored i guess uh but again that's yeah, cause there was more bugbears in another probably, room we were yeah. like well let's oh, yeah, get out there, of here we heard noises and yeah. we're so like just, let's just, just move yeah so uh, again that's kind of funny that's more that speaks to more experienced role players because brand new people who Shut again up. it's like you're playing a video game they're like well we haven't explored the whole place we got to go open every door but my there's XP. stuff in here yeah but you guys are, I like that. You guys are more on the story. It's like, this guy just left. We got to go chase him. So, yeah, I like it. Yeah. And that's <laughs> that's where our podcast began. But when we find him, what do we do? <laughs> Jack just, crap. <laughs> uh, you, uh, we, we you, we harassed you, the slept, shit out you, of him. You that's put him to happens. sleep. We hazed you him. You stripped him. Yeah. Uh, a techno viking. Played with his dingus for an uncomfortably long amount of time. Dusty. Dusty. And then you yeah. just kind of left him in a field to his own devices and he left. Yeah, like revenge after, taken. After <laughs> after he like he acted He will never forget. He acted very compliant with you guys for a long time too. Like almost tried to earn your trust and he's like, if they're just gonna leave me, I'm gonna go. <laughs> it's well, like, yeah, we didn't even like time to anything. We're just like, well Well, I listened to that episode again to today and uh and Wizard was just like, get in here, man. And then he went in. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay. It does That's probably should, not going to work. You should hold him. Oh, wait. We're getting shot with things. Abandoned yeah. ship. But that is that is something uh, to uh, reference another D&D person that I like to listen to. Uh, Who's this? Um, the Spoonie from Spoonie? the Spoonie Experiment. Uh, he does a series called Counter Monkey that talks about his time as a uh, clerk at a at a game shop okay. it's really interesting and he talks that he, he he's been playing like pen and paper games since he was like 12 so it's really fun to hear all these stories but one of the things he talked about was the uh it's actually the name of the video the prisoner dilemma but it's it's just it's really hard to keep prisoner prisoners like <laughs> with a D&D group it's like what do you do with this guy like do we just kill him i don't know that's kind of evil do we drag him behind us you know it's just a pain in the ass yeah, I've I've talked a lot. 
Did yeah, any, anybody no. want to add anything? Because that's no, that summed that's, it up. I mean, that's our whole. That's what happened. <laughs> just if anybody wants to know story. what happened, yeah, I mean, we really haven't. We haven't really missed anything. We've yeah, picked up every nice three trading ground. Yeah, so that's that's our beginnings. Uh, that's where we came from. Wizard really likes Electrum. Yeah, but I forgot about that part. Yeah, he he went to the. Uh, I had to. I had to make up where he could go, like to find a money <laughs> money exchanger, because he wanted to exchange all his gold for Electrum. Which, which, uh, if you don't know, do you, uh, no. the, the Forgotten Realms anyway, and their their gold system, or at least in Faerun, which is where most D and D things take place, the the continent. Uh, it's like it's the standard. It's well, I mean, D and D might have started the standard, but it's copper, silver, gold. Oh, wait, no, sorry, copper, <laughs> silver, Electrum, gold, platinum. It's that classic, well, except Electrum is kind of the weird one. That in the doesn't middle sound there. like wow. <laughs> no, it's not like, oh. Are you saying that D&D copied wow in 1974? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just so everyone knows. Gary Gygax. He got, got his it. epic mouth. Wow. He was like, you know what? This is, they're really onto something here. <laughs> yeah. Let's write this shit down. And then he took five hits of LSD. And... It, was, <laughs> it was the 70s. Uh, Anyway, yeah, he, yeah, he rest in peace. Trades all his gold for Electrum, which is worth half of gold. So that means he's carrying more weight with less profit. <laughs> he likes the Electrum. <laughs> his sleeves are just a drooping. <laughs> but luckily, I'm not a stickler DM for that kind of thing. I, I don't, I don't know if I'd want to deal with anybody who is. No. I, I get it. Like, from if you want to be really deep in your role playing and like, you know, how much well, is in your pack? You can you can go as deep as you want to. Yeah, that's, that's the fun thing about Dini, especially yeah. 5th edition, it's very open. It's very much DM decides a lot of things, which is great because I'm the DM and I can just be like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> that is the power. <laughs> that's the power. While you're hurting cats. Fight the power. Because we're cats. Yeah, anybody want to add anything, I guess? This might just be kind of a no, short little... That's been a pretty good recap. Yeah. No, I we think. got everything. The story so far. I'll just keep listening in, see where it goes, really. So, yeah, if you've just, uh, no, go, go for it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, if you've just listened to the... Demon Tim Allen. <laughs> to your first episode of Party Roll, if you just listened to the first episode of Party Roll, or if you've been listening to us the whole way, either way, thank you very much for listening, and hope this helped in some way, kind of let you know what the hell's going on. Probably not, because we don't really know what's going on after the time. I can put Yeah, so, you, you know, because I have to... Yeah, but... Yeah,